Welcome to the channel. On today's episode of the brochure series, we're going to cover off the VP Commodore, including the Berlina and Calais. The VP Commodore was produced from September 1991 to June 1993. The front page of the brochure has a VP Berlina on it. You've got the color coded mirrors, chrome insert, and the bumper bar. And you can see the difference between the VP shape and the VM. This is the Commodore Executive when it was released. It still retained the 14 inch wheels of the VN with new hubcaps. The exterior featured a color coded design on all bumper bars and the lower sills were now color coded as well. The styling revisions over the VN included a new grille, headlights and blinkers, new front bar, new badge work and a side repeater above the engine badge which was part of the ADR requirement for 91. Sheet metal wise the only revisions were the front guards due to the extended size of the blinkers. There were no sheet metal changes to the rear of the VP over the VN, but you did get a new taillight design, a brand new center garnish, which incorporated the illumination lamps for the number plate, uh, which was better than the VN because the VN had one little light that was pointing upwards from the bumper bar, and it was pretty dull. You also had a new rear bar design that was color coded and new badge work. For the Executive and Berliner models, a major upgrade over the VN was the standard remote central locking. You also had a security coded radio which was standard and power mirrors. For the Executive, front door map pockets on the door trims were now standard over the VN. This here's a Series 1 interior. The Series 2 front seats did get an upgrade with different stitching and they also received rear seat map pockets. Tachometer was still optional on the VP Executive or standard on S and SS. Mechanically, you had the carried over V6 3.8 engine with 127 kilowatts at 4.8 and 293 newton meters at 3.6. I'll talk about the V8 a bit later when we talk about the SS. Another important thing to mention about the VP is that Holden spent some money on the V pillar. They reinforced and strengthened it. It had less flex in the body. It made the car a bit more refined. This is the VP Commodore S, it's a Series 1, got a color coded grille, 15 inch wheels with unique hubcaps and large side molds. Interior wise it also had a unique cloth trim, 4 speaker stereo system with treble and bass control shared with the Berliner and SS, standard FE2 sport suspension with the option of the independent rear suspension and all other standard items of the executive. This is the VP Berlina. This is from the New Zealand brochure. The New Zealand Berlinas actually came with some extra goodies like VNSS wheels were standard and ABS brakes. The Berlina had chrome window surrounds and inserts in the bumpers and side molds. This is the inside of the VP Berlina. It came standard with air conditioning and front power windows with the velour interior. This is the VP Berlina wagon. This is the Australian edition and you can see that the hubcaps were featured on the Australian models. This is the Berlina LX interior. It's got the Calais front style seats as well as the rears, but they're wrapped in the Berlina fabrics. For the Series 2 update, the PPS received the VNSS wheels as you can see there. And this is the king of the road, the VPSS. It came standard with 15 by 7 wheels, fog lights, color coded grille, IRS body kit including front air dam, side skirts, rear bar extension, rear spoiler. It also had color coded mirrors. You also had the large side molds with the red striping that was unique to SNSS. I really like the marketing here. Yes and yes. S and SS. Pretty cool, I think. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe and notify buttons. The SS had the V8 5 litre, carried over from the VN, 165 kilowatts at 4,400 RPM and 385 newton meters at 3,600. You also had the optional HSV enhanced motor, which was 180 kilowatts, and it had a bit more torque as well with 400 newton meters. This is just one of the pages that shows the standard features of the Commodore Executive, Berliner, 
S, SS and Berlina LX. This is the back page of the Australian brochure. It's got the VP Berlina and it's fitted with optional IRS. With the Series 2 update, the executive gained 15 inch wheels and they reused the hubcaps from the VPS pack since they now had the VNSS wheels. So it was a nice addition to the Commodore. It did make it look a bit better with the 15 inch wheels. So from Series 2, all VP sedans and wagons had 15 inch wheels. The SS still had 15 inch wheels, the turbines, which weren't that popular at the time, but they were 7 inch instead of the 6 inch of the other models. The tail light treatment on the VP S and SS is the red pinstripes running right through the lights and the garnish. I'm going to highlight a couple of changes from Series 1 to 2 in the VP. The VP Series 1 SS has a standard rear seat. It's not a Calais bolstered seat like this one here. The VP Series 2 lost the velour bolsters and the red piping, which is what's on the Series 1, which you can see here. For the Series 2 on the Executive S and SS, the loop pole carpet was upgraded to cut pile, which was the same as the Berlinas and Calais. This is the VP Calais, it's the top of the line model, for the short wheelbase models. It has a two-tone treatment on the exterior, which Calais have featured since the VK. Here you can see the optional leather interior. For some reason, Holden cheaped out when the Calais had the leather option and on the door trims they had the fabric inserts. They didn't get that right until the VS Calais. On the front, the Calais got a unique treatment. Their great style grille does look a little similar to the VN, the middle part of it at least. You've got your unique pinstripes on the rear tail lights that are chrome. They look quite good. You've got independent rear suspension, which is standard on the VP Calais. The independent rear suspension was big news when the VP was released. It was standard on the SS and the Calais, optional on all the other models except the wagons and the utes. Inside you had a familiar looking four spoke steering wheel, which was much smaller than the VN Calais and SS, and it also had a revised horn pad with a center badge. This is the standard interior. For the Series 1 Calais, you also had tiltable front headrests, which were taken from the Caprice, but they were deleted for the Series 2. Inside, you pretty much had power everything. You also had a dressed console, which was taken from the VQ, climate control, and there was a driver's side glove box. You also had your trip computer carried over from the VN and a four speaker stereo system with treble and bass control. Other luxury features over the VN Calais included lighted floor wheels front and rear. The center console also had a light in it when you opened the lid. You also had variable wipers. Uh, there was auto lights off function. There was lots of little goodies in there. You also had adjustable seat belts for the front. The rear center seat belt was also retractable, which was a first for a Holden. Other notable features for the VP Calais is the rear demister turns off automatically once it's demisted and the dome light automatically turns off if it's left on to prevent the battery going flat. Here we have a couple of photos of the VP on the production line. This one's a VP Executive Series 1. The grille's clear and it's running 14 inch wheels. As with some of the previous models, the VP also had a formula pack which consisted pretty much of the SS body kit, front air dam, side skirts, rear spoiler, but it did have a different grille which was quite unique. I don't think I've even seen one in the flesh. This is a VP Vacationer, has slightly different trim on the inside and the wheel caps that it's got are off the VNS pack. Next I'll mention just a couple of the HSV models. The VP GDS is an important model. I have a full video on this, you'll see it in the link above. Click that, check it out. Here we have a very limited SV91. When this car came out, I thought it was one of the most beautiful Commodores I'd ever seen. Absolutely love them. It featured the first fully molded body kit, including the front and back bars, and there was only 103 made. IRS was standard on the car, as were the new five spoke 17 inch wheels. They were the second 17 inch wheel that had been on a HSV. This is HSV's first Senator. 
with the familiar 180 kilowatt package on the left. And here you have the Senator 5009, which had the 200 kilowatt motor, which it shared with the GDS and was very similar to the SV5000 of the VN. This is our old fifth anniversary VP Club Sport. There's only 138 fifth anniversaries made across the whole range, including Senator, Malou, Statesman, and Club Sport. This is a HSV Sports Equipment Additions that you could add to your Holden. Spoilers, grills, wheels, steering wheels. Here's the exclusive interior selections. You got the different types of seats, obviously the most famous being the Denvernish. This is the accessories brochure for your VP Commodore. Anything from bonnet protector, light protectors, floor mats, any kind of accessory that you need. Rear spoiler for your wagon. It's all there. Holden had it. You even had the option of a CD stacker and a mobile car phone, which were quite popular in the late 80s and early 90s. When the VP Commodore was released in September 1991, the VG Ute continued, and it wasn't until January 1992 that the VP Utility was released. It's very similar, except the specifications of the Ute aren't to the same level as an executive. The base model can have vinyl seats, non-color coded bars, no central locking, no power mirrors. The VP S Pack Ute had the S interior, color-coded bars, 15-inch wheels, and the option of the 5-litre V8. I'm sure many of us remember these police cars. The VP was a Bathurst winner. Larry Perkins took the crown in 1993 in his Castrol car. In second place, you had Scaife and Richards. The VP was on the track in 1992 and 1993. The VN missed out on winning Bathurst. It was only on the track in 1991. The R32 Skyline had already been banned in 1993. The VP also had Lexan variants. This one here is a super clean one. It's a Berliner equivalent. Had very low Ks. I saw this online. Just very tidy. Remember guys, make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Let's check out the retro TV commercials for the VP Commodore. <laughs> The new Holden Commodore. Could we really make substantial improvements on Australia's best selling car? Could we really get more performance and at the same time better fuel economy from its legendary V6 engine? Could we really make it stronger, safer, and 50% quieter than ever before? suspension for a smoother, more confident driving experience. And could we really make a remote security system so advanced it not only locks the doors, it immobilizes the engine? Yes, we could. And we have. Designed and built in Australia with all the resources in the world. The new Holden Commodore V6. There's a world of difference. When you invest in an ultimate driver's car, you should expect an unparalleled riding experience with independent rear suspension, a Bosch body computer, optional leather seating, and a standard anti-theft security system to protect your investment. An investment that is very wise indeed. For this is not an overly expensive German saloon. It is the new Holden Calais, the ultimate driver's car without the ultimate price tag. Introducing the new 1993 Holden Commodore Series 2. Built with some of the most advanced safety features in the world, like optional ABS and IRS, as well as bigger brakes and tyres, to help you cope with just about any situation that pops up on the road. Well, almost anything. So now, Australia's best value car is even better value. Guys, I'm going to finish the video up here. I've tried to put as much information as I could in the time that I had with this video. I'm also going to be doing this VP Calais one day soon in the future. Catch you soon.